Gary's rocking the mic. He was also wondering, what's the speed of sound in air? Here at Gorilla Physics, we can't resist a question from Gary, so we're going to help him calculate the speed of sound in air. We've got our oscilloscope set up, which has got a two-beam comparison function. Uh, signal generator, just making our sinusoidal electrical um, shape, AC shape. And I've got our microphone connected into one of the, the inputs, the signal generator connected directly into the other, and over here, a loudspeaker and a two rulers set clamped down to the table so we can accurately measure the distance this microphone is away from the speaker. I'm hoping you probably guessed this because it should be something you're pretty familiar with early on in your studies. We're going to use the wave speed equation to calculate the speed of sound in air. So we need to make measurements and we can measure our frequency using our oscilloscope and our wavelength by moving this microphone further and further away. We need to compare it to the base though. So what we're going to do is compare the signal picked up from the microphone with the base signal generated by the signal generator. So what we're saying is that the, the wave coming out here will have the same form as the signal here. And we're just going to check at what points they're in phase um, as we move our microphone a distance away from the loudspeaker. So using our wave speed equation, we can just do a little bit of fag packet maths just to work out roughly what kind of frequencies we want to be using on there. So if we're talking about what well, we know, the speed of sound in air is roughly 330 meters per second. We know that that's F lambda and we want to be taking measurements in the order of 0.1 of a meter for our wavelengths. Um, so the frequency is going to be in the order of 10, 10 to the 3 hertz. So I'm thinking in the thousands of hertz, which unfortunately is going to get a bit annoying. So bear with, and I hope that's not too difficult to hear me on the sound there. So what we've got here on the oscilloscope trace, we've got the signal directly from the signal generator. You can recognize that it's the higher voltage signal. It's also the cleaner signal, so it's a straighter uh, line, the less fuzzy line and the signal being picked up by the microphone, which is actually the sound wave that we're getting from this loudspeaker here. Uh, that's the fuzzier one, which is the lower voltage one, the lower amplitude one. As I move the microphone further away, you've got to imagine it moving through the sound wave that's being set up by the loudspeaker. So you can actually see it moving from the high pressure regions to the lower pressure region, from the compressions through the rare fractions. And what you'll actually see is them coming in and out of phase with the original signal, which is just stationary here at the loudspeaker. So watch closely. If I just move this further away, you'll be able to see the fuzzy signal moving along at, in and out of phase with the original cleaner signal. That is how we're going to get our readings for wavelength because the points where the wave goes in phase are going to be one full wavelength apart. So I've measured up the point at which it, they first come in phase. So that's zero lambda, if you like, zero wavelength. Uh, these are just numbers of wavelengths. So I'm going to measure the first point. We move it now, watching the oscilloscope, and measure the first point that they become in antiphase, so they're pi radians out of phase. Okay, so I'm just watching the oscilloscope as it moves across. I'm looking for the point now that the wave comes in antiphase, just there. Okay, so I've turned it off for comfort's sake while I take my measurement. Uh, along here, it's 43.5 millimeters, sorry, centimeter, I should say. Get your units right. And now I'm going to take the next reading. So now I'm going to move it along and wait for the point where they're back in phase. In other words, the two peaks are lined up. It would be a bit better if I had a partner who wasn't so lazy, Gary, to just check that so that I'm not checking it from a funny angle. And this one is 58 
that was about 57.9 centimeters. Okay, I'm going to take a few more readings to make sure that's as reliable as it can be. Looking now for out of phase, pi out of phase that is, or maybe there. These are my kind of four wavelengths, four full wavelengths that I've managed to measure. So I'm going to calculate the average there. Which is 29.475. I'm going to use all those digits for now, save me prematurely approximating, uh, which in metres, obviously, we want lambda in metres when we do a calculation, is 0 0.29475. Okay, last thing to measure, don't forget we're after our wave speed equation, so we need to use our oscilloscope trace just to measure the frequency of that, and hopefully then we'll get a calculated value for wave speed. I would recommend that you repeat that more often than that, okay, more than that, um, to give you greater reliability in your results and hopefully get a closer to the true value um, speed of sound in air for Gary. Okay, so luckily we can measure this with the sound actually off because we're just measuring the frequency of the AC trace coming from the signal generator. So here I can look at my time base over here. It's 0.2 of a millisecond. Um, so that's 2 times 10 to the minus 4. So there's the, the first peak, 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes away. So I've got 1 over 8 times 10 to the minus 4, which is 1,250 hertz. Okay, so our frequency, 1,250 hertz, our wavelength, 0 0.29475 meters. The wave speed is the product of those. So let's just hit that into the calculator. 1250 times 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.29475 gives me 368.4375. So 368 meters per second. Not bad, considering the official figure is somewhere in the region of 340. So this is our calculated value here, 368 metres per second. Our percentage difference then is the difference in V over the quoted book value of speed of sound in air, 343. Thank you, Wikipedia. If anyone's changed that recently, I'm not happy about that. Difference in V then is 25, um, that, take away that basically. Uh, which comes out as 0.073, so 7.3% difference. Not bad. How am I going to improve that? Well, of course, we're going to take a range of different frequencies. Probably about 100 of those different frequencies will give us a nice, accurate um, uh, value for speed of sound in air. That is the type of thing that Gary the Gorilla expected. He's got very high standards.